This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. All right, so just wanted to touch briefly on some acid-base topic that had been brought up by the staff, really about kind of the consequences of acidosis. So just kind of a quick refresher about the basics of interpreting an ABG. Shout out to Life in the Fast Lane, Mike Cadigan, November 2020. There's a nice overview, including I think so much of this is visual and repetition to just go through, you know, step by step. And in this case of his diagram, it's really top to bottom of determining acid base status, cause, appropriate compensation. We'll just briefly touch on, you know, reminding folks that below 7.35 is acidemic and above 7.45 is alkalemic. We won't really touch on that, but you start at the pH to determine if they're acidotic or alkalemic, if they're acidic or basic, and then you go down to look at the PCO2. If the PCO2 is high, so let's assume that they're acidotic for the purposes of this brief medical minute. If their pH is low, but their PCO2 is high, that's a respiratory acidosis. So conceptually kind of thinking of that as they are retaining their CO2 from a respiratory perspective, which is causing their pH to drop. If their pH is low and their PCO2 is low, that's a metabolic acidosis. And then from there, that's where you then go down into their bicarb, you calculate their anion gap, and you go down the path of calculating whether or not they have an anion gap metabolic acidosis and if they've compensated appropriately. So that's the first steps in looking at an ABG. So let's assume that they are a metabolic acidosis, that they're not mixed picture, and that they have compensated appropriately. So what are the consequences of a metabolic acidosis? Think of some patients that you've seen that are metabolic acidosis. And what do they look like? They're typically breathing fast, right? So what they're trying to compensate from a respiratory perspective, if you're thinking the two things that are working in conjunction with each other, the only two ways you really metabolize acid are either through the kidneys or through your breathing. So if they're acidotic, then they're trying to get rid of acid. They, you know, obviously, the kidneys are working, but you don't see that. But you can see them blowing off CO2. They can have that kind of Kussmaul-like appearance, rapid breathing. And oftentimes in shock, what are some thoughts about why patients who are severely acidotic are in shock? Yeah, so it's the underlying cause, right? So there's, you know, whatever the underlying process, typically and most commonly we see septic shock, oftentimes with an elevated lactate metabolic acidosis. In that case, sepsis is the vascular permeability, so they kind of lose their fluid out through a permeable endothelium and they don't hold on to fluids that way. But there certainly can be other causes of metabolic acidosis. Your body's physiology changes as the pH drops. And one of the things that stops working somewhere below a pH of 7.2 are your circulating catecholamines, so your epinephrine, your adrenaline, your normal adrenergic surge that you have to keep your vascular tone, to keep your heart rate up, to keep all all these compensatory mechanisms that we have, those catecholamines stop working as well in in an acidotic environment. As a a result of that, you have vasoplegia or this kind of uh, um, vasodilatory effect because you lose all that vascular tone. So in general, you just kind of have a cardiovascular collapse. One way to think about it too is a lot of our substance abuse patients in terms of the sympathomimetics, you know, the ones that drive your adrenergic surge, you think your meth, your cocaine. The reason why those portion of them will have catastrophic consequences is because they suffer cardiovascular collapse, and it's typically because of this acidosis. So they have this prolonged high output, they can have high output heart failure, they're tachycardic and hypertensive for a really long time, and there's obviously end organ injury that happens with that, but as they become more acidotic, whether it's from dehydration or additional injury or they're altered, they're not breathing well, they lose the ability to compensate for that, and so then they go into kind of cardiovascular collapse. So you get peripheral vasodilation, you get hypokalemia, that's more of a potassium shift related, and the myocardium itself is very irritable at acidotic pHs. So all of the medications we give normally, including ACLS dosing medications, work worse in an acidotic environment. And so beyond a certain point, epinephrine doesn't take effect, your vasopressors don't take effect. You know, when you're dropping pHs down towards 7, 6.9, whether it's DKA or post-cardiac arrest or cardiogenic shock or septic shock, whatever the underlying cause may be, when you create this 
acidotic environment, a lot of our interventions just don't work as well. The myocardium itself in the heart is more irritable. It doesn't exchange ions as well, doesn't squeeze as well. So you're getting an inherent kind of acidotic induced cardiomyopathy. And so you have to deal with the consequences of that too. Once you establish that, the key thing is really trying to understand what the underlying cause is, treat it. We won't dive into that too much, but certainly fluids, there's a kind of a minimal role for bicarb in this. Kind of intuitively makes sense that we would use it, but the data is pretty mixed on that because it's more of an issue of total body stores and availability of ions. But yeah, I think it's important to know if you have a patient who you suspect is acidotic because they've been hypotensive, they've been down for a while, you know, if you suspect they're acidotic, you're expecting them to have these kind of cardiovascular complications from that. And so um, those are the kind of consequences of a, of a metabolic acidosis. The Emergency Medical Minute would like to thank our sponsor, Swedish Medical Center, for helping fund our nonprofit organization and make this podcast possible. Donations are essential to our organization to cover operational costs and fund the creation of our online courses offering AMA PRA Category 1 credits. So if you enjoy our show, and if you're able to make a one-time or recurring donation towards our organization, any amount is helpful. Please click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.